Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Alejandro Perez, the CGI Nerd. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at using loops in Python with Houdini. Let's take a look at opening up the Python shell. And I'm going to go to my tab where I've been creating all the tools for this series. And I'm going to create a new tool. This is going to be talking about loops. And then let's get to the script tab. There we go. We have this. And we have this. Okay, so we are in day eight of this tutorial series and we are going to be talking about for loops or just loops in general, but we're gonna start off with for loops. So what is a for loop? So with a for loop right now, we're having a list and we have separate elements in here. We have five different elements. And what a for loop does, it takes a list or an object that has a range of values and here we can see that we're using numbers so these variables are the same that is what it's accessing to here then we have a, another number here and this number you can see that it's not the same as this one because it doesn't have an S set here so we're creating this at this point and basically what this is going to represent is each one of these values here. Each time it loops around, it does anything that is indented right after it. So you can have a lot of lines. Right now we only have a print statement. But let's take a look at how this works. You can see that we print one, two, three, four, five. So that's what we can expect with a loop. It does anything, or for loop, it does anything within a list or some sort of range value here and then iterates anything that is indented immediately after that. Let's take a look at doing range. So there is a function inside of Python that's called range, and basically that allows us to create a range. We have three values that we can set inside of a range, a start, a stop, and an increment. So here we're going to increment by one. We are going to start when the value is at one, I mean at two, and then we're gonna increment until we reach the, the number 11. So let's take a look, let's apply that and run this. And you can see we get one, two, three, four, five, oh, it starts over here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So once it gets to 11, it breaks the loop and it doesn't run again. Let's do a print loop starts here, just so that we could clearly see it. Now let's apply this and run it. And we can see that the code for this one starts there. You can see it's incrementing by one gets all the way up to 10. Once it turns to 11, it breaks the loop. Now we can change the increment and you can see that we have it going every two numbers, so every even number. And you can change that to any value really. Then also if you wanted to, you can do, let's say, range five. And what this is gonna do is start at the number zero and it will run five times. So let's do this here and run it. You can see it goes zero, one, two, three, four. And as soon as it makes it five, it breaks the loop. And you can see that it iterates five times using this kind of method. Right now, like I said, we're using a print statement just to print whatever this number changes to, but it can be anything really. Now let's take a look at while loops and while loops work a little bit differently. What you do is write while, then you have a condition. As long as this condition is not met, the value, or while this condition is met, sorry. So you start off by creating a while, then while this condition is true, we are going to keep on doing this. Make sure that you do something where it does break the loop, so it needs to turn false at some time, or else you get stuck in an infinite loop. Here we're saying while the number is less than five, we're going to print the number, and then we're gonna increment number by one. So that means that we're gonna get plus, so we're gonna start off at one, then two, then three, then four, 
and keep on going. So let's apply this and run it. You can see that we get one, two, three, four, five. So it's similar to what we had before, but we're starting with the number one. We're incrementing each number, but we have to do that manually, whereas the range will do that automatically for you. But we are getting a condition and we make sure that we're able to break it. So that is the break condition there. Now let's do a simple example using Houdini code. So we're going to import the who module. And once we do that, we're going to get a selection. So let's create a few objects in our scene. Actually, let's just do it manually here. Let's do geometry node. And then let's create a sphere. And I'm going to create several of these. So we have them in our scene here. They are all overlapping right now. So what I'm going to do is create a variable for x. Then what I want to do is iterate through the list. So we're going to get this selection. This is going to create a list of nodes for us. So that is what our selection is. So with that list, it's going to go through each individual item. Those individual items are going to be held into the variable here called node. Now we're going to want to set the parameters. So we're going to go through on the parameter for x, y, and z. The y and z we're going to set to zero, make sure that it's at zero. But the x is what we want to change. And we can see that on the center, if we hover here, the parameters for x, y, and z is tx, ty, and tz. So that's what we're going to be changing here is the TX. Right now, because we set X to zero, it's going to stay at a value of zero. But if we go through in this loop and increment the value, so now we are incrementing it by five. Each time it loops around, it will set the X to be at a separate position. So Let's select all these nodes. Oops, I missed one. There we go. And then let's apply this code and run it. And something did not work. Let's pause the video and figure out what's going on because I don't see an error right now. Ah, there's no error. This is just me forgetting to make sure that everything is visible. So let's create a merge node and then select all these nodes and visualize them there. And we can see that it sets everything five units apart. So the code was right. I just needed to make sure that we could see each one of those nodes. There we go. It's five units apart. Let's just push L here and lay them all out. And you can see that we were able to do that pretty quickly with a short script that will set those values five units apart on the X. All right. I hope you found this useful. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.